Hello, we are still extremely busy, which is why today we have another guest tutorial for you. Although it might look like we're being kind of quiet because we don't have any videos coming out, that is because we're working incredibly hard on other things. So uh, you will see the results of those coming up in the next few months. The first of which, of course, will be HitFilm for Mac, which is coming along really, really well. It's running really fast on Mac, in fact, a little bit too fast. Something else we have been doing is putting some new posts up on the hitfilm.com blog. I recommend checking it out because the last couple were some community spotlights where we've taken a look at some of the best work from the hitfilm community. There's some great visual effects tests and short films there, so don't miss those. Okay, so on to this week's tutorial, which is again from Maya Pictures, the master of procedural techniques. This week he's showing you how to create a radar entirely in hitfilm without using any stock or imported elements. It's all created in hitfilm using effects. Okay, so I'm going to hand you over to Maya. Hi, this is Mark from Maya Pictures. I want to welcome you to another very exciting tutorial about HitFilm from FX Home. And today we want to take a look on how we can create such a radar using only internal effects and filter. So let's start with a new project. Start editing and create a new composite shot. So this is a shot where all our layers will be placed for our final results, so I rename it to final, uh, HD ready, resolution, and hit OK. So just add another composite shot, and I rename it to radar, with the width and height of 500 by 500 pixels. So the first thing we want to create is our circle. So just add a new layer, choose a greenish color by 500 and 500 pixels and <clears throat> yeah we name it to green and to transform this rectangle into a circle you may use the ellipsis mask or just add a polar warp effect so type in polar warp drag and drop it to the green plane layer and decrease the end radius property until we get our shape Let's rename it to Crit and make a copy of it. So select it, right mouse button, duplicate, rename it to Gradient, and add a radial gradient effect. Double click in a outer radius, just invisible it. So we can drop the color, darken the second one a little bit, and now play with its values. So we get a nice looking color gradient. Okay, the next step. We want to create our frame, so just duplicate uh, the layer again, rename it to frame, remove the radial gradient effect, double click on the polar warp and increase the start radius to get some pixel width of for our frame. And for our coordinate axis here, just add a Crit effect, drop it to the crit plane, double click, open up point 1 and 2, and enter values like minus 20 by minus 20 to 20 by 20, a border radius of 2 pixels, and choose a blend mode of stencil alpha. So only the circle shape will be used to place the crit, and just track and drop it above the polar warp. Maybe decrease the opacity of the gradient plane and our basic radar has been finished. So let's create a new composite shot. Before, I just select the gradient plane and copy it. Now go to the media, new composite shot, rename it to search. 500 by 500 pixels, hit create and paste the previous copied layer and delete the radial. Now double click the polar warp and play with the range. 
so decrease its value. So we've got a like a nice Pikmin shape here. And that's a rather composite shot to get our values, uh, color values. And another gradient effect for the color gradient. Double click. And uh, choose a brighter color and a darker color. Now we can remove the radar again. Go to the color gradient and place it start and end colors. Okay. Brighten it up a little bit. Okay, now add a blur effect. Maybe 10 pixels or 15 pixels. And let's rotate the layer to open up the transform properties. Create a keyframe, a keyframe for the rotation. Go to the right position and rotate this layer 12 times. Okay, go back to the final composition. Add the radar and the search error. So we have our moving search area. You may bring the radar radar to the first position. Okay. Now let's create our points. So just create a new composite shot. We name it to point, make it 10 by 10 pixels. Hit create, add a new layer, plain white. Choose a white color. Add once again a polar warp effect. Drop it on the layer, double click. Decrease the end radius to get our circle shape. Okay, maybe choose a yellow color. Maybe it looks better. So create a new composite chart. Rename it to points with our full resolution of 500 by 500 pixels. And just for the visibility, have the radar effect. So we've got our radar to position our points. Okay, just create a lot of, or some copy of, copies of it. Now you can hide the radar level uh, layer. Create a new composite shot. Rename it to Finder. Put in the points. Put in the search. Hide it. Add a set mate effect. Double click. Choose as the source layer our search composite shot. And if you play the animation, our points will be visible dependent of our rotating search layer. We'll go back to the find composite chart and add the finder points. Open up the control pane, layer properties, blend mode, add. Okay, and to make it or to tweak our result, let's close up this points. So go back to the finder, add a new create layer, add an auto light flare effect, 
double click, choose a laser point or a laser dot, flare type, hotspot, 99 flares, decrease the threshold, intensity, Okay, open up the global and play with the U-shift to match the color point, color. And now we have some nice glowing points for our radar. Okay, I hope you understand the basics and create your own effects. Uh, so although it looks like we may be a little bit quiet at the moment, whenever we're quiet, that's when we're busy, which means we're doing exciting things. Oh, this is <sighs>